Hey, what's up guys, Skylar Thomas here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own YouTube intro, uh, much like you see with guys like Peter McKinnon and Chris Howe. Rather than telling you where these guys buy their templates, uh, this video is more for those of us that either don't wanna pay for a template or those of us that wanna learn how to create these in After Effects just because we're interested in motion graphics. This is gonna be kind of a quick video. I know most of us don't have the attention span to sit through a long, uh, tutorial and there's a lot to cover so what I'm really gonna do is just break down the techniques that are used and try to get through it as quickly as possible so with that being said let's break down how I made the uh, intro that you saw at the beginning of this video step one pick your music uh, artless.io is the site that I use it is fantastic for everything from professional client work to film scores to YouTube soundtracks um, definitely recommend it. I'll put a referral code in the description. If you sign up using the referral code, we'll both get two free months on our subscription. Win-win. So pick out your music and try to limit the area that you're using your music to about 10 seconds. You don't want an intro that's any longer than 10 seconds, especially when you figure out what it takes to really build out these intros. We're doing them on a frame by frame basis for the most part. So try to keep it to 10 seconds at the longest Find some good music that really represents you, what you really like, and the vibe that you want to put out there. And then we'll move on to the next step. Shoot your footage for the intro. Try to shoot some clips that either represent who you are as a person, represent what your channel is all about, or if you don't have that, just try to shoot some B-roll that you, know, you really like and is kind of representative of how you shoot. Uh, you can do this with the camera, on your phone, what I've got is uh, some snowboard footage because being a snowboarder has been, always been a big part of who I am. I've got this shot of me doing a kickflip on a longboard. All right, that's just silly. I should be skateboarding. Don't mind that. I just needed some footage. Uh, you're kind of classic guy holding a camera looking out over a balcony. Me on a longboard. And then your cool shot of you looking back at the camera with the cool background. I just needed to shoot some b-roll for this particular mock intro. Be as creative as you want, make it look as cool as you want, and then leads you into step three, which is edit your uh, footage to the music. You want each clip to kind of stop with each beat. You want to feel like the music and the footage go hand in hand. So edit that footage to the beat, export it out, and now we're ready to go to the next step, which is after Effects. And if I didn't mention, I've got the After Effects project file available for download in the description. Go ahead and download that. You can take a look through the actual project files and kind of check out how I break everything down on a frame by frame basis. So now that we're in After Effects, technique one, organize, organize, organize. So what I like to do is I like to take each clip of footage and I like to break it down into sections. So what you're going to do is once you import that uh, your footage clip, new comp from selection, find the areas where it cuts into the next clip, and hit N, that'll trim your uh, workspace, trim comp to work area, there you go, you've got your first comp, you can name that footage one, and you'll see that I've got these all sectioned out into footage one, footage two, footage three, and all that. Helps you keep everything organized. And if you're building out a template to sell later on, you're gonna want to have these compositions with your footage so that whoever ends up buying them can actually swap out the footage with their own. And now you've got a template that you can sell. So there you go. If you wanna make this template, once you download it, your own, swap out your footage in each comp. You just have to take whatever's there and put your own footage in and delete this one out and you're good to go. You've got your own footage comp that will play seamlessly into the overall uh, intro. All right, the next step that I like to work with is creating overlays for the footage. They can be everything from X's, O's, pluses that show up what you'll see right here. I've got this particular overlay and I can put this, just kind of plop it in on a frame by frame basis in different areas. I've created a few of these that have different styles. One of them actually animates kind of frame by frame here. They just kind of pop in and pop out. 
and I'll just put these in various places throughout the intro. As you can see here, they kind of pop in and pop out, and they just kind of give the intro a cool feel. So the X's and O's technique is a good overlay. I've got this one, which is a cross that animates in. And you'll see that that just kind of pops in there. Pops in later on as well, right there. That's one overlay you can use. They're super easy to build out. You just kind of create a couple different shapes and you can use trim paths on them, animate the trim paths and you're good to go. Camera viewfinder, I just kind of built this out. Um, kind of seems in line with, with what I do with, with shooting on the camera, so I, I thought that was nice representation. For this one in particular, I just built out all these shapes, lots of different squares and rectangles, and kind of just animated them a bit with different colors. Kind of give it this kind of glitchy look. I didn't really use this one a ton, but once again, Another overlay there, and you could actually probably find these kind of overlays on Google Images if you just looked up Camera View Finder as a PNG. Use that just fine. And then for the glitchy uh, box kind of look, I've got these box overlays. So basically you create a solid of whatever color you want them to be, and then with the solid selected, you go up to your rectangle tool and you just start creating all these different boxes and you're basically creating masks that create these shapes here. So this one really just holds for one frame and then I created another solid, created new shapes and then on this final one I did a white solid, created these shapes and then I animated one of the, uh, the mask paths to, to move around. And that's all you gotta do there and what that will look like is you'll see these kind of boxes pop in and out. And when they're going by really fast on a frame by frame basis, it really just kind of gives it this kind of glitchy look. So that's one of the box overlays. The next one, which gives it an even more glitchy look is your box bars. And once again, I use the white solid and these are just rectangle masks and they're animating downwards. So you, I basically just took the mask path, animated them all down and over a couple different frames. And this one really kind of gives it that cool glitchy effect, as you can see going across the screen right there. Third box overlay is essentially the same thing, except it's animating a little bit more. Just make a few of these that you can use. You can pop them in over your footage, gives it a nice kind of glitchy look. And those are the overlays. Get more creative if you want. If you want them to be whole on uh, solids that kind of pop in and pop out with each frame you can do that too and then when when you start putting them into your actual composition you can kind of get creative with how you do them you can turn the opacity down on them you can use different blend modes to kind of give them different looks over your footage play around with that um, it's really up to you to kind of create your own unique style with your intro all right, so the next technique is going to be playing around with the different styles of your base footage. What I mean by that is we'll hop into this particular section. And what you'll see here is I take that composition of my base footage and I play around with it in a lot of different ways. So what you're gonna see is the first thing I do is I bump it up and I do a uh, kind of like a black and white effect on it. And then after it's bumped up, I add another footage layer, which is essentially the same layer but I have masked out this particular area to the side and I have uh, repositioned it to be on the side and then with the next frame I pop in the same layer as I duplicate it and I bring it over to the left and what I've done with both of these is I put a tint effect on it uh, to, to give it this kind of blue effect. There's a couple different ways you can create kind of like different stylizations. One is I have this solids folder where I've just created a number of different uh, solids and I just will we'll put those into the composition and drop the opacity a little bit on them that gives them that color. Or if you really want to play with how the blacks and the whites uh, map out to different colors, you can use a tint effect. Um, both are cool ways of stylizing your footage. And then you'll see that on a frame by frame basis, these will pop in, pop out. I've got this one that pops back in and then I animate it from left to right across 
and it just kind of gives it this cool glitchy style effect. So as much as you can, play around with bumping up the scale of your base footage, uh, the color of it, and how that animates across. Another cool thing you can do in the same style is if we were to go to like section four, I've bumped this one up, put a blue solid over it, and I put a Gaussian blur over the base footage. And then what you'll see is I pop in another footage file. I do a mask around it right here, and then I put a, uh, a red tint effect on this one. So you've got this same footage in the same place of me longboarding by, and then the mask for this particular layer of footage. I animate the expansion on the mask so that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it reveals more of that base footage. And then what you can do is you can line up two different uh, footage layers. One that is your kind of base footage here, and one that is right on top. And as you animate one down, you animate the one that's on top of it down with it. And that'll give it that kind of almost like glitched out channel changing effect as well. So there's a lot you can do with how you animate your base footage and stylize it. All right, the next thing we're gonna cover is working with text. Uh, one creating the text that you want to be working with, whether it's your name that you want to be highlighting, the things that you're going to be doing in your channel. In my case, I kind of allude to video editing effects, things like that that are popping up, tutorials. It's kind of what my channel is all about. Uh, I work with After Effects and Premiere a lot, so I kind of did this, this animation of one into the other. My name a lot. So... The different techniques that you can really work with here is one with your name. We're going to hop in here. And what I created was what I called a composition called scatter text. And I really just kind of frame by frame of different letters until it finally hits my, my actual name here. And then what I did was I scaled that up. I animated it to be moving across the screen. And I used a soft light. Uh, effect to kind of give it this this kind of look across the screen um, and That was in for the for the uh, blend mode that I used Next we can kind of just pop in To our next section but to give it this kind of effect uh, What I did was I used a luma mat so to create a luma mat um, all you're really doing is you're creating text that is white and you're going to animate it across in just the same way that you would with any of the other text. And then what you're going to do is uh, duplicate your base footage, put it right underneath this white text, and then set that layer to a Luma mat, which will basically show anything that is pure white, and that's what it will show on the base clip. Once you do that, it'll actually hide that particular layer. And from here, you highlight that, that footage and you can put effects on it to stylize it. In this case, I just kind of upped the brightness and the contrast and it gave it this look right here. All right, for this kind of text look right here, all you're gonna do is to create a white bar that goes across your footage. You're going to create text that goes and animates across those white bars. And then using the text, what you're gonna do with that shape layer is set that to an alpha inverted mat. And essentially what that is going to do is gonna cut the text out of the white mat as it moves across and it just leaves the base footage what's underneath it as what's showing. So it's kind of a cool way of creating almost like a banner effect. All right, the final thing I'm gonna cover real quickly is just doing a, a quick like morph um, from what we have is the After Effects logo into the Premiere. Pro logo, and I just animated the kerning of learn to go to kind of go along with the uh, the morphing here. Um, I'm actually gonna probably do this in a different video. I'll do a real quick video on how to animate the path of one shape into another. Uh, it's it's a pretty easy process, and it's all over YouTube as well if you want to Google it there. But it might be my next video. Yeah, that's really it. You go frame by frame. It takes a while, you know, but eventually you've got this really cool intro that you can work with. And I know I covered everything super quickly because most people don't want to watch a long video. So if I'm wrong about that and you actually would watch a whole tutorial of me really breaking down each technique, 
you let me know in the comments and I'll do that. But for the most part, I think people just want to see the gist of how things are made so that they can go about creating it on their own, which is what it's all about. And you learn more that way anyway. So cool. All right. Subscribe if you like the video. Hit like. And I'll be making a lot more content. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.